Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of my Pokemon Battle series, The School of Hard Knocks. Throughout this episode we're going to be jumping on to the Pokemon Global Link Battle Spot Ladder, playing under the Rating Battle Rules, which are the Championship Rule series. And they are the equivalent to the Video Game Championship 2017 rule set this season. So, we had a bit of a disappointing end to yesterday's episode. Um, as I was saying yesterday, we got really complacent, um, rushed our team preview, um, and it didn't end well. So hopefully we can kind of pick back up today um, on a bit of a better streak. I keep doing this and saying how important it is to kind of concentrate on <clears throat> on your team preview and just not get complacent throughout any stage of the match because your opponent is, is kind of waiting for that and just will take advantage of it and jump on it straight away and it will cost you so it's so important to just try and keep that concentration level up, think through your moves, take your time and just make sure that you're just kind of making the most optimal players. I mean, when you look at the best players in the world, you look at like, 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 like a Wolfie Glick, uh, Rarezo, Marcus. I mean, they all play consistently well. And I know I'm missing hundreds of names out. Well, not hundreds, but you know, I could ream off a lot of players' names. They're just great players and they make the consistent players because their, their level of concentration in a match is just so switched on. And it's just, that's what you need to try and replicate in your matches and just to, and it will kind of the more you practice it the more you think through things it will come a bit more naturally and i think the the results will kind of improve from that so hopefully we'll try and do that in today's episode and we'll get grind out some wins and finally climb over that 1700 mark so be nice to get over that by the end of this week anyway so we're just going to sit and wait for our opponent we on a record of we played 25 with the team we've got 19 wins, 6 losses, it's not too bad, it's not brilliant either, we're on a rating of 1676, so quite close to that 1900, uh, 1900, what am I talking about, 1700 mark, anyway we've got our first opponent from Mexico on a rating of 1596 I think, and they're running a team of Mimikyu, Alolamuk, Incineroar, Torkoal, Tapu Bulu, and Porygon 2, so <clears throat> looks like a quite heavily trick room based team here straight away he's got the talk all so it's going to really put me off bringing my cortana and my nine tails um he's got the mimikyu now the thing is with the mimikyu i do want to lead my nine tails i'm running raw on my nine tails and mimikyus tend to run a uh, mental herb just to guarantee the trick room up so even if he leads with the Porygon in that situation, as long as we've got something to cover the Torkoal, um, then we should be all right. Obviously, we've got to worry about the fake out as well from the Incineroar. But I think what I might do is lead my Ninetales and Garchomp. I think I will bring... I, I wonder whether it's worth bringing both of my fire types here. We've got to be careful though for the Incineroar and the Muck with my Marowak. That's the only problem. I think Talonflame would be a nice choice here. And I don't think Melotic's going to be that great. But if we can stop the Trick Room, I think Marowak. No, actually, I'm going to bring Cortana. That was just on a whim. Because I am, I am running Night Slash on the Cortana. So I don't know what sense that makes right now, but at the time it made some sort of sense. Mara probably would have been the better choice there, so I probably just totally cocked up this first match, but we'll see how it goes. We might only need three Pokemon. <laughs> so my opponent's gonna lead off with, let's see what you've got, boy. He's gonna lead off with the Mimikyu and Incineroar. Okay, so straight away he's gonna be putting pressure onto my, my Ninetales. But I am going to go for that roll into the Mimikyu slot. I need to stop him setting up the Trick Room. And I think I'll Tectonic Rage into the Incineroar slot with the Garchomp. And because the Garchomp's putting on so much pressure straight away, hopefully he fakes out into that slot rather than my Ninetales slot. 
but you can never bank on these things. So I'm going to Tectonic Ridge into the Incineroar to make sure I pick up the KR and roll into the Mimikyu slot. Incineroar is going to fake out, unfortunately onto the Ninetales slot, so he's probably going to get this Trick Room up. If that's what he's going for. We should take the Incineroar down here, but then we kind of have to expect that the, the Torkoal is going to come in um, this next turn which is going to make things really difficult for us. So hopefully this does pick up the KO. It should do. Yeah, easy. Easy money. And yeah, there's a trick room. So we're in deep trouble. <laughs> this talk all comes in now, which I definitely guarantee that it probably will do. Because then we've got to also worry about the not just the eruption damage because it's going to do a massive chunk to Garchomp just because of its sheer power. We've got to worry about the player rough from the Mimikyu as well. Hmm. So I think what I might do. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, the Cartana is no good here. It was definitely not the greatest move. At least. If I brought Marowak in this situation, it would have been a good switch in now for the Ninetales. So there's me starting the episode off by saying think through the thing every turn and things like that. And I just totally disregard that. So if you're going to do anything from this episode, this particular match, is just learn what I'm not doing. But I think I'm going to have to sack my talent flip, uh, my Ninetales here. So we'll just Blizzard in hopes that I get it off. I don't think it will because the eruption will come out. But if I do, I hopefully break that Mimikyu disguise. I'm just going to protect my Garchomp here. And Topo's going to go for the eruption, which will take down my Ninetales. Easy peasy. And they'd expect probably a player off to come into the Garchomp slot now. Yeah. So I'm going to bring in my Talent Flame. And I really need to try and burn these Trick Room turns. I'm going to fl Brave Bird into the Mimikyu just to... Oh, actually, yeah. I'm going to Brave Bird into the Torkoal actually just to reduce that um, eruption damage and I'm just going to Earthquake with my Garchomp because I will be able to get a Brave Bird off before the Torkoal moves so hopefully if it does eruption we do do a, a, a decent amount of damage it won't do too much but it should weaken it enough so Garchomp may get through this turn if we do then that's huge yeah, we're both going to take it quite nicely. Player Rough's going to come out. And we do survive, so we're going to get that. We're going to get the Earthquake off, which is really nice. So hopefully this will pick up the KO onto the Top Ball, as well as breaking that Disguise onto the Mimikyu. If we get rid of the Top Ball, then the Cartana can kind of come back into play. But we can't pick up the KO on the Top Ball, which is really unfortunate. We do break that Disguise, though. <sighs> right, now, hmm, I think I'm going to have to really, the Brave Bird into the, I wonder if I can get away with Earthquake and again if he's going to double up into that Talonflame slot just to get rid of it, hmm. But then if I lose Garchomp, I'm not really in that great position at all. But by protecting here, I'm just kind of an... Uh, we'll do it. We'll just go for the protect. Just I've got another turn of Trick Room to kind of get through after this, I think. So I'm going to have to not attack through that. And the protect here is quite obvious. So you can quite easily just double into the... Tokol does Flamethrower into the Talon Flame. And it is actually enough to pick up the KO.
Yeah, I'm in, in, in a terrible position here because the Cartana's assault vest that I can't protect, so it was definitely not the greatest pick at all. So I think I've lost this match straight up, which is terrible. Hmm. Oh, there's not a lot I can do here. I think I have to just um, Sacred Sword into the top hall and, and go for a double protect with my Garchomp. Maybe I get it, but even if I get it, I don't think I'm going to have anywhere near enough to um, to pull a win off. No, I don't get it. Flamethrower and Imagine Cartana. Yeah. And that will be game. Game over. So that is... Extremely disappointing. We do see the trick room end now. <sighs> the only thing I can really hope for is that the Tuck Hole Protect and a Poison Jab is enough to take down this Mimikyu. I doubt, doubt it will be. If we get a mad crit, we might. <sighs> nah. Doubt it. No, no one, yeah. Get the poison, but then the trick room's just gonna come back up, yeah. Well, that's obviously a massive issue for the team. And the selection that I yeah, played there. There's no reasoning behind bringing Nine Tails other than that roll, which didn't make any sense anyway. We would have been better off just going for the taunt with the. With the talent flame and even just getting that activating the mental herb at least at least the next turn um, we would have been able to the next time trick room comes around we would have been able to stop it maybe but it's just one of those things so that is extremely disappointing so all i can do is apologize for that guys it wasn't the best show but we can't let it get to us, we've just got to move on to the next match and see if we can kind of pick up. <sighs> so frustrating. <laughs> and it's more frustrating because it's not the team it's doing, it's not like the team fell apart there. It was it was me that, that caused that and that's the, the thing, like if I guess in a way good to admit that it's kind of all down to, to you at that point. It's not anything you can kind of say, oh, uh, I didn't put this in the team, so it, it, the team couldn't cope with it or something like that. It was, that was all all down to how I played, how I approached the match. And it was the same with the last match yesterday when we when we had that the that match. It was, that was the same exact situation and we just need to kind of try and snap out of it. And um, we'll go on to the next match and see see how we get on. So we've got Rod from the United States on a rating of 1587 and he's got a team of Tapu Koko, Cartana, Tapu Lele, Arcanine, Salamence and Tentacruel. So that's kind of cool. We haven't really seen many Tentacruels. Um, I do know the recent regional in the States past weekend, I think last weekend, um, there's a few Tentacruel in Top Cut which is really cool. Um, but how are we going to approach this one? Hmm. He's got double intimidate, so Milotic might be quite nice here. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lead Talonflame, Milotic. <clears throat> Definitely want my Cartana. And I think I'm going to bring Marowak as well to this match. But then I've got nothing to really... The Garchomp would be really good here. Against the Tapu Koko, Arcanine and the Tentacruel. Yeah. Hmm. 
I think I'm gonna forgo Cartana and bring my Garchomp. And I'm gonna prioritize trying to get that Tailwind up. <clears throat> so my opponent might lead Lele just in the just with the idea of stopping the uh, the Gale Wings ability and stop me from attacking with any priority flying moves. But it won't stop me because it's, it's, Tailwind isn't an attacking type move, so it isn't prevented from the the psychic train. But either way, my opponent is just going to lead off with the Tentacruel and the Cartana. <clears throat> so we could be really cheeky here and go for. Hmm. No. What have we got? What have we brought in the back? Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a Tailwind with my Talon Flame while I can, and I'm going to Hidden Power Fire into the Cartana. And hopefully Talon Flame sticks around this turn if Militic does go down, if it's a sashed Cartana. And I've got Garchomp to bring in next turn. And the Earthquake. Um, and just having Talon Flame next to it firing things off really helps. So, Cartana actually survives on its Sash. Tentacruel uses Muddy Water. Talon Flame should survive, hopefully. Wow, no. No, no, no. Critical hit on Talon, which is really unfortunate. And I imagine a Leaf Blade's going to come out onto the Melotic. Ah, that's disappointing. Because normally Talon Flame should survive that. <clears throat> so we've got the Marowak and Garchomp now. But let's take a look at my opponent's team. Because I'm not sure if he's got any ground immune Pokemon. He has got the Salamence. I've got to remember that. So the Salamence actually could come in if he's brought it here. But I am just going to protect and just go for... Uh, mm. No, I'm not. I'm not going to protect. I am going to... I'm going to Shadowborn into the Cartana. And I'm going to Tectonic Rage into that Tentacle. Just to make sure I clear it off the field. Cartana protects. And there's no protect from the Tentacruel, so we're going to clear that off the field, which is nice. I should pick up the KO here. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's the Tentacruel gone. Now let's see what my opponent brings in. Mm. Hopefully it's not the Salamence. It's a Tapu Lele. So that is fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Shadow Bond into the Tapu Lele and I'm going to Fire Fang into the Cartana with my Garchomp. I'm not sure if a Shadow Bond will be enough to take out the Tapu Lele, but I can't really afford to Earthquake into my network when my Marowak's next to it, so I feel like this is probably the best kind of option I've got at the moment. And that Cartana has had a beast boost, so we kind of need to prioritize taking that out because if I leave it on the field, it can potentially kill the Garchomp. Hopefully, we outspeed with our Marowak, which we do, and it'd be nice to pick up the KO if we can. Yep, so that's great. Oh, okay. That may or may not have been unfortunate for my opponent, depending on how that Lele was EV'd. And now. We're two against one, and it is the Tapu Koko. Okay, so we're actually in a super good position now. 
and we somehow managed to kind of pull this back so somehow so I'm gonna just um, shed a bone into the tapu coco and poison jab with my garchomp And the match is forfeit, so my opponent just forfeits there. So, that wasn't as bad as what I thought. <sighs> it started out really bad, um, and I thought we weren't going to get the win there, but then we seemed to manage to pull that round. So the tailwind really came through for us in that match. So that was good. Um, let's have one more. We'll have one more. We'll have one more match. Let's hope it's a quick one. So, just to get over this tilting that we've been doing, we'll have one more game. Let's see if we can quickly find an opponent. I'm gonna put the Gladian theme back on and hopefully we can climb a little bit higher. We can't manage to get with that 1700. It shouldn't be that hard, but um, we're just hitting walls at the minute. So hopefully with one more win, we'll call a little bit closer to that. We've got our next opponent from Mexico, rating 1674. And they've got a team of Arachnorid, Garchomp, Alolan Ninetale, Celesteela, Arcanine, and Alolan Muck. So, what are we going to do here? Talonflame is great here. Talonflame is really good. You can see Arachnorid, the Ninetales. Hits the Celesteela hard. Brave Bird's going to be doing a lot of damage to the Garchomp as well. <clears throat> I think I'm going to lead Talonflame and Melotic. Just in case he leads with that Nine Tails, it's going to give us a good option to not allow him to set up the Aurora Veil. And I think I might bring. Um, hmm. Garchomp and do I want Cartana? I don't really think. Do I need Cartana? No. Well, Cartana's not bad against. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with Marowak as my fourth choice. Yeah. Just for another tech against that Celesteela, to be honest, because I haven't got a great deal to hit with. Talonflame's not the best. You can't really rely on Talonflame to, to deal with Celesteela because the Flare Blitz on bulkily built defensive ones, it's not going to be KOM. So um, I do have the Fire Fang and the Garchomp, but again, I don't really want to be having to rely on that too heavily. So just having the Marowak in there just gives me that little bit more assurance. And I'm running a speedy Marowak. So it should be outspeeding the muck and the arachnoid, so that, that will do decent enough damage on it anyway. So we're going to lead off the Milotic and the Talon Flame. And I think I'm just going to double straight into the Nine Tails here. Yeah. I'm going to go for the Blizzard, just take advantage of that with my Milotic. And I'm going to just Flare Blitz. Um, no, no, I'm gonna, no, 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 actually, I need to keep my, yeah, I'm gonna flare blitz into the nine tails and I'm just gonna blizzard with my melotic. Just to break that sash and stop again that Aurora Veil up. It does all white damage onto the muck as well. Uh, that was a crit, so that's why that did that. We should get the KO now on the Nine Tails. Stop any Aurora Veil going up, so that's great. <clears throat> and the Muck goes for the knockoff onto the Melotic. Which might actually do us a favour because we don't if that Arcanine comes in, we don't want to be locked into um, Blizzard. But I doubt the Arcanine will come in, to be honest. And the Garchomp comes in. Hmm. So I think what I'll do here... I'm going to get a Tailwind up. And what have I got in the back? I've got nothing that I really want to switch in. 
So I think And I can't protect with my melotic, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm just gonna ice beam into the guard chomp. And get a tailwind up. Hopefully that guard chomp isn't scarfed. So the muck protects. Is the guard chomp just gonna go for an earthquake? I get the tailwind up. And the guard chomp's gonna go for the tectonic rage. Okay. So unfortunately, Melotic's going to go down here. Now I'm going to bring in my guard chomp. And now I'm just wondering, actually, is that muck in earthquake range? Because if it is, I can take it out without the berry activating, and I can Brave Bird into the Garchomp. And a combination of Brave Bird and the earthquake should be enough to take that Garchomp out. So technically, I could pick up two Chaos here, depending on what my opponent does. We know that Muck can't protect this turn, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if I see the Arcanine come in in this slot. But we'll just have to see what my opponent goes for. Hmm. And my opponent just forfeits, which is a bit unfortunate because at that stage of the match, you know, there's still a lot to play for, a lot of things could have went on, but. Never mind, you might not have had anything in the back that you could switch, safely switch into the Earthquake. But regardless of that, good games to my opponent. Thank you for the games. And guys, we'll call it a day there, so that wasn't too bad an end to the battle. I guess we kind of pulled two wins back after the, the huge tilt. But thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate all the support I've had for the channel and the views and things like that. If you have enjoyed the episode, leave a like down below. Any comments, again, just leave them in the comment section and we'll get back to you. But until tomorrow, you guys take care of yourselves. Enjoy your evenings, afternoons, mornings, whatever time it is when you're watching this. And I will see you tomorrow. So, take it easy, guys. Bye-bye.